Hello, my friends. Welcome to the metal shop. We're continuing on with the intake manifold swap here. And as you can see, um, and I didn't film any of this, and I'm sorry, I did, I've done the swap already, but I'm going to go over the steps to swapping out the intake, the lower intake manifold. That's the difficult part um, of the whole operation. That's the stock one right there. And we'll get into that just a little bit later. I'm gonna do cover um, the swap, removing the intake manifold and also the installation of the new one. So a oh, little preview here. You see I have the, the GT40 intake man, manifold already installed and looking really sharp. I don't know if we can see that there, but the thing is looking you're hardly going to see it, but it looks really nice. Give you a little sneak preview here underneath the Home Depot bubble wrap of the upper. It's already back from the powder coater. Got the really nice Cobra plate. This thing came out sweet. Really nice. Anyway, so we'll just use this as our teaching guide here on how to remove the lower intake manifold. And... I mean, it's not difficult, it's not that difficult, but there are a lot of steps. So, number one, the first thing I did was I drained the coolant. Um, there is gonna be coolant in here, um, in a bunch of these passages, and what you don't want is you don't want it dropping, you know, all that coolant going down into your oil. That being said, I'm gonna do an oil change because I need one anyway, and I believe some coolant probably did get down into there, so. But save yourself the headache, the hassle, the mess. Drain out your coolant, drain down your coolant first. Step number one. Um, removing the upper, that's easy. You know, your six bolts really pluck that thing off. That's that's not that's not that hard. This, the lower intake manifold has a ton of peripherals that need to be disconnected. And the most difficult ones are the coolant hoses. They go to the uh, heater core. This Cobra has heat, but let's just pretend this is a Fox body Mustang, same difference. You've got these hard lines here, and each one of those goes to the heater core, and you've got to get the hoses off these hard lines. There's two of them right there. It's gonna be difficult to reach. I have a little more room here on the Cobra. You're gonna have a lot less room on the Fox body Mustang. So those have to go. Next is the fuel lines, and I'm gonna give a brief pause here. All right, so we left off with the fuel lines, and you're gonna to have to take those apart in order to remove the lower intake. Um, you are gonna to have to pick yourself up a fuel line removal kit, or it's, you know, it's a, it's a quick disconnect kit. This one, very inexpensive with Amazon, doesn't matter. Get an expensive one, you can get a cheap one. The, Fox body uses two different sizes. I believe it's this one and this one, the larger one for the fuel supply, the smaller one for the return. But you're not gonna get these connectors off without this tool here. So this was, I think it was $15 or something from Amazon. So we've got the two coolant lines. We're disconnected our fuel lines. We have a coolant line here in the front that goes to these hard lines that feed the heater. Now, the, <clears throat> the distributor. I didn't have to take my distributor off. If you have a Fox, it would have been easier if I had. I'll just be, be perfectly honest there. Um, if you have a Fox body, just take it off. Mark it, you know, mark your rotor, mark the position of the housing, take it off out of the way because the back of the intake here, it's almost, it's right up against the firewall in a Fox body. I had extra room back here so I could kind of push the harness and stuff out of the way and I could slide the intake past the distributor from the back. But even then I ran into the gasket and I'll get into this a little bit later. The gasket kind of moved out a little bit because I had to, it couldn't, you want to be able to drop straight down on your gasket so you don't want to do any sliding. My gasket, the little, the little, neoprene one there, the silicone one, slid out a little bit, I had to undo the bolts and tuck it back in there. So you can remove your distributor. Take off the, your thermostat housing right there, two bolts, we'll remove that. 
Uh, and FYI, you buy a gasket kit for the intake manifold, the upper and lower intake manifold, does not come with a thermostat housing gasket. I thought it did, I was incorrect. I got one, got a couple coming on Amazon right now. I had a full uh, gasket kit for a motor, I'll show you in a little bit, in the uh, other garage there. But I robbed that when I was building the Street Beast Cobra. So remember, you're gonna need to replace that gasket as well. And there's a hose on there, nearly impossible to get off, so I just took the housing off itself. I get that gasket, put the thermostat in, bolt that back up. Okay, so we've removed all that, and then there's just 12 bolts. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. Same on either side. Take out those bolts, comes right out. So obviously, the installation is just the reverse of that. Um, I'm gonna go out to that other motor I have on a stand out there and just give you some quick tips there on installing the gasket. I did wanna talk about one other issue that I had um, with the upper. And here's the old one. And the only issue that I had was that this um, spacer, this EGR spacer plate was permanently bonded to this, okay? This is aluminum, this is aluminum, and what it is, it's held in place with four studs. So what you have, you have four steel studs and this aluminum plate, and you guys know that you're gonna get a galvanic corrosion process going when you have steel next to aluminum. Now steel and aluminum play pretty well together overall, but if you introduce a catalyst, say water, and coolant flows through this thing, you are going to get that galvanic corrosion. And this thing, this these two parts were fused onto those studs like nobody's business. Ended up using a bunch of heat. I took it to my friend's shop, used a bunch of heat, and we put a wooden block here so that we could hammer it off. And then on the bottom side, they actually give you, there's a nice lip here, so you can we can hammer on that lip without damaging the surface. And I did, you can see I did damage the surface there just a tiny little bit. I'm gonna have to fix that before that goes back on, but I plan on cleaning this up and um, painting it and reusing it. And there are these are available in the aftermarket as well with a bigger diameter if you've got a bigger throttle body or what. But these things, be prepared. This is an MF, -er, okay? They will not come off. So just be forewarned on that. All right, we're gonna go out and check out the engine on the stand, and we'll talk real quick about installation of the lower intake manifold. All right, so luckily I have this other five liter uh, engine right out of a, I think it's out of a 88 or 89 Fox body here in the uh, metal shop <laughs> adjunct garage here. So I can show you real quick how I did the gasket installation there. Now, this is the one that came off the car, which is nice. The, uh, the Cobra, the engine had already been rebuilt and it has new Felpro gaskets throughout, but the ones I use are exactly the same here. And we'll start with these really nice silicone gaskets here at the front and back. They call these at the China rails. Now, old cork gaskets, most people don't use those anymore, or they'll use a cork in combination with a bunch of silicone, or guys will build up a big wall of silicone here. I like these. These are, it's a, it's, it is a silicone. So it's like pre-made already and they fit great. You see they have these nice walls built on them. And so what I like to do is, I'm gonna put a nice dab of silicone here, another dab of silicone right here. And I put just a little bit, I smeared a little bit here on the bottom just so that it would stick and wouldn't move. Okay, so that's what I did. Put that gasket on there. There's a little indexing mark there. Then I also applied Another dab of silicone here, another, a good sized little, a good sized little dab. Right here and right there, same thing here. Underneath, a little bit on the gasket, put it on, another good dab here, another good dab there. Now these gaskets, you'll see, there's a side, and it says head side right on it, and it's kind of the nicer, colorful, more colorful side. These have already been squished, but the Felpros have a really nice raised, area here around the ports that gets crushed when you torque down the gasket. And if you look here, you see these nice little notches that they have. And if you look down here, it's tough to see, but the 
the head gaskets, this little, the, the, they have a, the head gasket has a part that sticks out and this notch will rest right on it. If you can see that right there, it's pretty sweet. And it takes just a little bit to fiddle it, to fiddle it in there, fiddle it in there. And now this gasket's being held in place with that little bit of silicone. And actually I waited. I put the dab underneath, put this silicone on, this silicone rail on, and then I put the dab on top and this kind of smooshed right in to that dab. So now it's just giving it that, it's holding it in place just a little bit. Now these gaskets are designed to not use any, don't smear any Permatex or anything, not even around your water jackets or on anything. They have this raised area that crushes. If you smear that stuff on, now you're, ga now you're getting a lubricant in there, your gasket can move, it could raise up, you could, maybe you're gonna get hot spots or whatever. I don't use any kind of sealant or any kind of glue there to hold the gasket down. It really, it sits in place very nicely there, okay? So we'll go back to the other garage and just real quick, go over the reinstallation. Okay, so for reinstallation, I assembled this completely on the workbench. I put the fuel, I transferred the fuel injector and the fuel rails over. I used dielectric grease around the O-rings. Check your O-rings. Um, this was on a running and driving engine, so they were fairly well lubed and still plump, I guess for a better, lack of a better term. A couple of them had been smushed and flattened, so I replaced them. I have old injectors on that other engine and from you know other projects, so I did replace a couple of the O-rings here. Um, so and hang on one second, I just I want to I want to show you that. All right, so here is a fuel injector, and this kind of orange color into just indicates a 19 pound injector stock injector those are those are nice and colorful these are look at the sun faded this one this is a 88 this is off my 89 that i put bigger injectors on anyway tough to see you so you have that kind of that orange color that is like a nylon spacer that you have then you have the o-ring and then you have like a plastic cap which clicks in place now be very careful because when i took mine apart I think three of these caps and even a couple of O-rings ended up stuck in the old lower intake manifold. So you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a little pick, something and carefully put those out, but there's the proper order. Spacer, O-ring, and this cap will snap right back on nicely. So I lubed all of my, all the O-rings up and the body a little bit, just staying away from the, the spread, the injector nozzle surface with dielectric grease and poop, 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 they slip right in, and the uh, fuel rail goes right on, four bolts hold that on. So again, I assemble this on the workbench. I assembled the, the hard line here, which bolts, has a kind of a pretty slick bolt where the threads turn, and the, but the hard lines themselves don't turn. I assembled that. I put in all my sensors ahead of time, and I did extra. That one's gonna be for an electric fan, Remember, I had to drill this one for the ACT, the air charge temper temperature. Um, that one was already there, but I assembled all of them. And that one, it was nice. I had a nice handle when I went to slide the thing back on. And then you just follow a, the torque sequence. It's in a book, you know, the proper torque sequence. I want to say they go 5, 10, or 10, 15 pounds. The ultimate torque is 25, only 25 foot-pounds of torque. But it's pretty simple, you know, go 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You just you're just crisscrossing, going back and forth. It, it makes perfect sense how you want to do it, and you end up torquing them to twenty five foot pounds. And so hopefully, you know, there's not aren't very many good videos on the installation of the lower intake manifold for a Fox body on YouTube. And hopefully, this I've gone and really explained a lot of the stuff that I kind of had to figure out for myself. Um, hopefully this really helps, you know, a few guys out. I'm sorry that this was boring. You know, you're not seeing me spinning wrenches or whatever. You just listen to this guy, blah, 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 blah. But I, if you're, if you're doing this, I'm sure that, that you will find this helpful. And we're going to, then we're just going to, you know, the opposite. We're going to rehook up our lines. We're going to hook up our gas lines. We're going to, you know, do the reverse of everything, you know, take very carefully taking our time and making sure that everything is right. So, and next we'll do this. And there's some changes in the vacuum on this uh, versus the, the stock um, 
87 to 93 Fox Mustang upper intake manifold. But luckily for the Cobra here, I don't need that many vacuum sources. You're gonna have to get creative if you're putting this on your Fox body. So as always my friends, thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, please click subscribe. Hit, hit that little bell to get notifications. I'm trying to pump out these videos. I'm still working full time. I'm not a professional YouTuber. You know, share the videos, um, comment. I still respond to all my comments and I truly appreciate the support. I love the comments, e you know, even the trolls. I respond to everybody. Um, so again, hit that like, hit that subscribe and I'll catch you next time when we're installing the crown jewels <laughs> into the engine bay of the Cobra. We got uh, valve cover gas, or valve cover, really nice valve covers to install as well. All right, my friends, take care. Bye-bye.